Up next, we have Shri Santosh Kumar Sahani, mining engineer, involved in the same operation. Let's have a bigger round of applause, please. Before I, I call upon the next person for felicitation, I would like to give a brief introduction. We have amongst us Sri Siriak Zozef, MD and CEO of Squadron Infra and Mining Private Limited. So is leading the same organization which was leading the rescue operation. Siriak Zozef played a pivotal role in the great Himalayan rescue mission, Mission Zindagi rescuing all 41 track workers. Thank you so much, sir. The dignitaries may take their seats onto the days. So would you like to say a few words? Yeah. First of all, it's uh, thank you so much for calling us and for the presentation ceremony of uh, my three uh, team of three mining engineers of Goa. We're proud to have these three people and they well, they come from Goa. So. Uh, it is a great moment uh, to be here and uh, be part of this uh, uh, celebration. So we are, we are very proud uh, to, be, to be part of the entire rescue team. It was a very tough uh, operation, but getting 41 out of 41 in a, in a, in a, in a, in a this intensity was something which we, it's a big trophy for all of us. So it was. Um, you know, normally in such situations, you end up at least with a few casualties. But here it was a, it was a, it was a well coordinated effort from the, uh, from the PRO, from the Indian Army, NDRF, STR, and the state government, everybody, and including agencies uh, like us. So when we got this uh, call from uh, the Indian Army Brigadier Vishal Verma, so we air dashed to to Silkia with a team of uh, six people, and then. Three of us followed up. We had a setup at uh, the, our office also to have a 24/7 backup uh, service. Now, uh, you know, it was a it's a crisis. It's a crisis, and many of us want to know what we did. So we fly drone inside the tunnels. We're the first to fly drone inside the tunnels, and we integrated that with the entire system. There was more collapse coming, so it was very important to have the safety of these uh, rescue. So one is the rescuing 41 people, and then the safety of the uh, rescuers was even more important to give seamless, uh, you know, uh, service and to see that they, they, they are, you know, they. And if you are racing, it's time. We have no time. There's no design. It's only everybody brought in our best to put it into the system, and then it was a game of grit. It was a game of emotional management because uh, it was keeping the, the, the 41 people inside, keeping them. No safe and comfortable is important. Apart from that, we ourselves, my team, we all were, we knew that, you know, we are also at risk. And it was a game of, you know, emotions, which was working. Courage, technology, as Dr. Hagri was talking about, technology, AI, NML, and all those uh, things are important. And to top it all, the Indian Jugad. So the Jugad was actually which worked, but it was the integration of all this. And we are very proud that we were called from India we have a technology which was in India itself, which we could support, and it was indigenous. So that's the power of India. So we got technology, we got uh, the, the Jugad, and uh, really the I my hands uh, fold in salute to the uh, the miners who went into that hole, 800 mm hole. They go 50 meters, 47 meters inside. They dig, cut the steel, and come out. Selfless. Whatever said. And uh, before I conclude, it is the wish and the prayers of every Indian that worked. Technology, Jugad is always there, but science of God, which we could be very proud to get 
41 of the 41 people. It's something amazing. So it's, it's, it's everything is there, and it all we are all in India. The prayers of every Indian is very powerful, and that's where I think all this if you could if you package all this together, that's where we see that where India is going and we're definitely getting to be a superpower. I think that's 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 the that's the message we get from this entire episode. Thank you once again. And wonderful to have. I was also in, uh, in fact, I started my career in Goa. I was with, I don't know, the Sasha Mayor in Goa. I was in Savate in 92 to 93 as well. So it's, it's a formation base which was important. So once again, thank you all for inviting us here, especially my people. My team is my strength. And they've been doing a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We as a society are always indebted to the services of people like you. Before we go ahead with the function, we have Sri Ramchandra Yadav from IFB, who is formerly being a member, a corporate member of FSAI. I would like to request Sri Ramakrishnan sir to acknowledge his presence with a floral bouquet. Shri Rajesh Menon, editor of Times of India, Goa, so has led the newsroom in Times of India in multiple states. He is a recipient of national and international recognition, recognition for news reports, news features, graphics, and photos. Prior to working as a resident editor in Goa, so was heading the national desk of Times of India in Mumbai. I would now call upon our special guest, Shri Rajesh Menon, to kindly deliver his address to the gathering. of the dais, officials, experts, and dear friends. A very good morning to every one of you. It is a privilege to be present here as you deliberate on firefighting and security in the age of technology. When I was invited for this seminar, I was a little surprised. What has journalism got to do with firefighting and security? But, but then I thought hard and re realize the reason behind it. We journalists firefight every day, 365 days a year. Rain or shine, we have no choice. We do, we do firefight so that we can bring before you a credible and factually correct newspaper without any bias or agenda. But our firefighting story is for another day. Fire security and safety has become one of the most important aspects of our everyday lives. Whether it is home or office, on the road, or in the evergreen forests, every time a fire breaks out, it brings to fore of irresponsibility or lack of safety and security. We need to act till a tragedy strikes. We don't have to look far. In the Western Ghats, we have one of the eight biodiversity hotspots of the world. But early this year, a forest fire raged for weeks. We saw our biodiversity vanishing before our eyes. Goa's forest fires left behind a trail of destruction, scorching endemic trees, birds, and reptiles in the Western Ghats. Evergreen patches in the ecological cycle, which had evolved over hundreds of years, were reduced to ashes. And all that we could do was sit and watch. In this age and time, when technology has become all pervasive, when AI and IoT have even entered our personal lives, it took us weeks to douse a fire, whose remnants are a stark reality of our inefficiency and resistance to change. George Bernard Shaw had said, and I quote, progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. 
They took acres and acres of biodiversity to be destroyed before the government decided to bring in all weather stations and drones for surveillance. Not that we didn't have the technology, it is just that we never bothered to use them. I'm sure today's deliberation will highlight how the digital, digital footprint can be extended beyond the cyberspace. And the experts here would throw light on the use of technology to ensure we have a secure environment where there is order in chaos. For a Surakshit Bharat, we have to usher in significant changes. To quote Swami Vivekananda, and I quote, all the powers of the universe are already ours. It is we who have put our hand before our eyes and cried that it is dark. Don't let our future go up in smoke. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minan sir. Indeed, nothing changes if nothing changes. Uh, next, we have an eminent personality in the field of education in India. They say encouragement, enthusiasm, and excellency are the major aspects of education. We have with us today, so I'm going to introduce you for some time. Okay. <laughs> uh, good morning to all of you. I'd like to share three very important things with you. One is thanks to our honorable chief just here, Jaspal Singh Ji. Uh, GEC has been uh, able to develop a new eBeat software system uh, which is going to improve the security of the state of Goa. We have done almost 50% of the job is done thanks for his leadership that uh, in future you will have better security. What we have done essentially <laughs> is that you would have seen our constables going around and uh, in a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler and trying to see who is where and what is the issue, but they have a very systematic uh, you know, checking system that is called uh, the beat system where the police goes around uh, the given area. Uh, for example, in Ponda, if you have to say, there are about six beat areas and then the Police keep going around, you know, whether it is a, a house or whether it is some establishment which requires concern. So they have a, their own watch system. Now this system was done manually. I mean, they used to take a book, carry a book and go to different locations saying that, okay, everything is fine, everything is fine. So what we suggested to the police department is, sir, today's mobile technology can help. And sir immediately agreed and we started working on a mobile app. And that mobile app is now ready and then we have already done some testing in Raigondar. So what essentially happens is the mobile is in the pocket of the uh, constable. So he goes around and then wherever he is, he just takes a picture, uh, making sure that everything is okay. If something is not okay, he will put the alert immediately. So the SP, DYSP, IT, and then uh, DGP, everybody gets an alert within no time. Know, earlier it was book, he had to call, he had to do so many things. Now uh, we are trying to push the technology into security system and thanks to sir that we have been able to complete the North Goa part, we are yet to you know, uh, you know, deploy it because we are doing security checks because we don't want people to hack into that system and uh, create any further confusion on that. So that is one great thing that uh, thanks to sir we have been able to develop that. The next important thing that I'd like to share with you is that very often people tell GEC has to start doing training, training, training. The next important thing that's coming is the national education policy. In the national education policy, everything has to be linked to some credits. So even if you are coming from industry, we are supposed to give you a training with a certain number of hours and then you go home with that credit. Nowadays what is happening is you just take the certificate and go. And that doesn't add up over a period of time. So what Government of India has done is for working professionals to integrate working professional into the mainstream so that you get your master's degree, you get your PhD degree just by being in your profession. This system has been in Japan. In my last talk at FSCI I also have made this point again and again and we are pushing Goa University to make sure that we do this, that professionals have to be given degrees based on the years of service that they put in and the Government of India has now given us a road map very clearly. If somebody has put in four to seven years of experience, he should be given a master's degree. Beyond seven years, he can be considered for a PhD degree. It's only a matter of time that we start doing this. When we started our Fire and Security uh, Association of India lab, uh, the first question that was asked is, okay, you're giving training. Is this approved by any national body? 
So the next thing that we did was we went to the National Skill Development Corporation in this DC, made sure that last month we got the certificate saying that the NSDC people also visited the FACI lab in uh, GEC. So whatever training that henceforth we are going to give in GEC will have an NSDC approval, which means that certificate is valid across the country and that's the best part. If we had done it, then they would say who is GEC, who is the FACI. Now, we have a Government of India stamp on that. Thanks to Ganesh Shekde, he took a lot of initiative in making it happen. And that course also has got the drone component embedded in it. That means we can teach drone and drone related safety also. So now we can launch in a big way our training programs because we have the Government of India approval for this kind of a program. So these are two very important things that I wanted to share and the third one is I am very happy about all the GEC students who have done wonderful work at the Uttar Kashi. If you want to uh, listen to the full story, it is a very amazing story. I think it is once in a lifetime. We don't want such things to happen and we were very happy when we saw our students doing some great job. So GEC is proud of all these three things. Thank you so much, sir. To trace today's function, in the capacity of Chief Guest, we have the Honorable Shri Jaspal Singh, sir, Director General Goa Police. Sir has been awarded President Police Medal for his meritorious service in Police Department in the years 2012 and 23. Sir joined the Intelligence Bureau in 2012. His work was highly appreciated during the pandemic when he handled the evacuation of large number of migrant laborers and foreigners. As a Joint Commissioner, New Delhi Range, he handled Republic Day celebrations in 2021, held under the shadow of farmers' protest. In Goa, he was instrumental in public outreach scheme called Samadhan. He holds postgraduate post degrees in MCA, MBA and Law. He has handled communally most sensitive areas such as Northeast and Central Districts of Delhi. He has handled disaster.